some of you re might remember where I got this thing going many years ago, but it's been sick. I haven't really used it much over the past few years. I know it doesn't run because the last time I tried to start it, about a couple years ago, it didn't want to start. So the carburetor probably needs to be serviced and cleaned out. I'm also going to have a look at the uh, gaskets too. But uh, this is the old style Briggs & Stratton engine. I believe this model has point condenser um, ignition on it. But what we're going to do is just take it apart, have a look at the state of everything. Oily air filter. I think they called these chokematic carbs. But everything's working properly. This is supposed to slowly go back down. So we're going to take everything apart. I'm going to take this top cover off and we're going to see what exactly is going on under there, especially with this right here. I don't even know if this is still hooked up or not. So we need to inspect that. So there's a couple of Phillips head screws. There's one here, one on the back here, and then I believe there is one more up here somewhere. One three eighths inch bolt. I believe that's five sixteenths. Yep. And there we go. And this is indeed not working at all. So the starter ratchet don't even turn anymore. Now I could do it the cheap way and just put some oil through the top here. But because this thing's been sitting so long, we're better off just removing it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Well, that's water, so that's not good, not good at all. So you'll notice with all the tension off of the bottom now, because with that shaft, there's a top part of that shaft that's about a half inch that there's no threads on, maybe a little bit more than that. So now with all that tension relieved, it rotates. So I am not thinking that this thing is in very good condition. We have to split. It's pretty well seized on there, unfortunately. Yeah. It's definitely water and corrosion that got in here. smells like stale water. I know I don't have any of these extra on hand. Uh, what you could do to clean up something like this is uh, sand blaster, media blaster would work perfectly. So it's uh, the next day. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't quite know what I'm going to want to do with this. I don't know if I want to bother fixing this and you know, trying to get it running again because we don't need this machine. Um, so I'm probably just going to sell it. So I don't know if I wanted to swap a different engine onto it or try and fix the thing that's on it. Yeah, I basically need to clean this all out, use some WD-40, probably clean the bearings up too. So what I'm doing now, I just clean this out with a wire, wire brush on my drill clean this up a little bit, tried not to damage that seal too much. And now I'm just cleaning up the ball bearings. I've already done two. I'm not gonna be able to get them perfect, but I can get them pretty good. So I just have these four to do. And then I'm gonna clean up this as well. This I'm probably gonna take over to my uh, 
bench brush over there and clean it up that way. So I've come to the conclusion that if I end up having to swap the engine on this, then that's what I'll end up doing. But for right now, we'll try and press forward, see if we can get this engine running and uh, kind of go from there. Um, that way I can at least get you guys this video. And uh, you know, a lot of you, I know you enjoy seeing the old stuff getting fixed up. Now, in all honesty, I should replace this whole assembly. There's rust in it. The rust is likely to come back, especially if it's left outside. If it's left inside of a shop, like you know this environment that I'm in right now, doors shut, the moisture is not really gonna be an issue. But if I put it back in my shed outside or somebody stores it outside that I end up selling it to, it'll uh, end up coming Probably back. the best way to handle all the rust on all these ratchet parts is to dip all this stuff in the, into a uh, rust mover and then clean it off that way. I don't have any more of that stuff right now, so I can't really use it. But anyways, so what you want to do is put this back in just like that. And then your ball bearings, these are simply just going to go in each pocket. So put one there, I dropped one. But you just stick them on in. Just like that. Stupid simple, doesn't really require much. And then grab your deal here. I didn't really take the rust off. I'm gonna go clean that off. Now again, proper way to get rid of this rust would be to dip it and then clean it off. But that's about as good as I can get it with my brass wheel brush on my bench grinder. So we're just going to shove this back on. Just like that. So now you'll see, rotates just fine. This has 30 weight oil in it. So we're just gonna. Do that. So I'm gonna clean the crankshaft off and then uh, we're gonna reinstall this thing. I'm gonna put a little ATF inside here. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Oh yeah, much better. That's how it should turn. Now we're just gonna whip it back on. There you go. Still rotates as advertised. We have a half inch bolt and then a three eighths inch bolt. So basically we just have to remove that remove the spring from the governor arm, that's no big deal. And then once we can angle the tank off a little bit, we can remove this linkage wire right here. And that's just, you have to just rock the tank back a little bit. So I'm gonna take this thing off, then we'll go to the workbench and pull the carburetor off, see what kind of condition the diaphragm inside's in. Leave that there for now. Back one is 7 16 Simple as that. Let's see everything. I think what I'm gonna do is just remove the whole arm itself. I don't wanna risk damaging that spring. 5 16 go leave it all there meet you guys at the workbench these carburetors are relatively easy to remove but unfortunately we might come across an issue with that gasket so we're just going to pull all these screws out And we also have another one right underneath here. So we'll pull the PCV hose off. And we can get to this one relatively easily. 
All right, so that's all five of the perimeter screws out. So this might be a pain. She's on there tight. And you'll see that little plunger that's in there. Surprisingly, the inside of this carburetor is in really good condition. So I don't really want to mess with it too much. I want to at least see if we can get this running or not. Put all this back together. Now, I think what I did when I put this machine away was I had drained all the gas out of the tank. The inside of this tank is really clean, so I think we're okay. Yeah, the inside of it's pretty clean, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll put these screws back in and put the PCV back on. We'll stick it back on the machine and see if we can get her to start. Put some gas in it. Just like this. And this goes on just like that. governor arm back on. Perfect. Free travel. I'm going to replace this pull cord. And just like that, I'm going to get a pair of vice grips. Just very carefully, just like this. I don't want to break anything. There we go. Reach in, pull that out, and just nip off the end there, just like this. So now what I do, you'll see my replacement line here. All I do is pretty much cut it to fit, plus about four more inches. So we'll cut it about right there. like that. Perfect. Then we're just going to put small knot just like that and pull it in as much as possible looks like I'm gonna have to use the hammer treatment See if it'll fit. A little bit of a bow out, but now what I am worried about, this pull cord might be a little bit thicker than this, so we might have an issue with it taking all of it, but we'll see. But all you do is just feed your line in. There you go, nice point. There it 
just poking out. Grab a pair of needle nose. Perfect. So same deal. Gonna get the knot as close to the end as possible. Good. Takes all of it. That's exactly what we want. So let's reinstall this onto the machine. Next step. Okay, so this thing's gonna go back on the same way it came off. Now, I do have these pieces here on both sides. So I'm just gonna very carefully kind of line everything up. Set this to where it was, which I believe was here. Last thing I'm going to do is check the foil. Thread end to check. Oil's good, right where it should be. pretty good can't really beat these old brigs when they work right they're stupid reliable when they're taken care of I don't know how old this machine is but I would guess early 80s 1985 so she's pretty old so now what I'm gonna do is put that bag on the back I don't quite know how I'm going to uh, clean that thing out but definitely needs it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.